Hello folks, welcome to my channel, Draft Raw Authentic, where I'm going to give you a raw and authentic opinion about NFL draft prospects. Now I'm 26 years old from Baltimore, Maryland, and I have a love and passion for football. I've been watching it since 2008, and the one thing that's actually made football great to me is not what happens during the season, but actually what happens during the offseason, and that's the NFL Draft, the marquee event for the offseason. The reason why I think the draft is so great is because I feel as though it is the thing that helps organizations build their team to be a perennial playoff team. If you think about teams probably over the last 10 years, you will notice one thing about them that has made them perennial playoff teams, and that is the NFL Draft. And that's what this channel is going to be about. All the content is going to be about the draft. Before, during, and after the NFL season. And I hopefully I can do it each and every year. It's a big hobby of mine, and I really, really love it. I really love taking the time out studying these players and just the football aspects. Now, I like the combine, too, because it gives you a sense of, like, where some NFL prospects are. But I don't put too much weight into the combine. And I definitely don't put a lot of weight into the measurables of these prospects. Those are for the TV and radio media scouts that get enamored by that stuff. But I, I, I take all that stuff away, and I just do it for the straight-up football. Now, because I don't actually have a track record on YouTube, being as though I'm new to this, I at least want to give y'all two examples of players that I've studied over the last two years that will kind of give you a sense of who I am and how I kind of study prospects. The first example is going to be a wide receiver from Maryland back in 2015, Stephon Diggs, who was drafted in the fifth round by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this is a guy that I actually had rated, me personally, as the second best receiver in the draft, right behind Amari Cooper. And it's crazy that, I guess because of the injuries that he had during college, and he's kind of had injuries in the NFL too, but what I saw was great hands, route running, and explosiveness. Something that you saw when you watch Odell Beckham Jr., actually. And it's crazy that the year before Odell was drafted, I actually had Odell as the number one receiver in that draft class. <laughs> He ends up being the third receiver taken, and he's the best receiver in the league or the best receiver in that draft class. So after that season, and seeing Stephon Diggs, I said, wow, this guy has Odell tendencies. And if you're looking at this video now, looking at the NFL, like, Stephon Diggs is one of the better receivers in the league. And looking back at it, Stephon even though I had him as the second best receiver in the draft class, he's kind of cemented himself as the top receiver in that draft class. Because of Amari Cooper with all the drops, he's kind of, he's almost leapfrogged him. He still has a little bit of the problem with the injuries, but when he's on the field, Stefan is the most explosive player on the football field every Sunday. Now that's just one player, right? And he's from Maryland, so it's not like a small school, but it's not like a huge big school. But let me give you another guy that I actually had highly rated. Free safety from Middle Tennessee State. He went to Tennessee in surprisingly a high third round pick. The reason why I say surprisingly is because looking at all of what the internet was saying, he was looked at as a fourth or fifth round pick. I personally had him as a third round pick, which he where he did get drafted. And I thought he would drop a little bit lower than that because he was from a small school. But what ended up happening is I believe scouts started to see how good this player was. 
not media scouts, but the actual scouts for teams. And he got drafted a little bit higher. His name is Kevin Byard. And just this past season, he led the league in interceptions. What I saw from him on film during college was the great range and the underrated tackling ability that he had. And he's shown that in the NFL. Now, like I said, he's gonna he dropped a little bit because the school he went to and then his size. But it was something that I saw in him, that drive that I saw of him, and the athleticism that just said, whoa, this guy has something. And right now, you can low-key almost call him probably the best safety in the league. Now, I don't want to go too crazy with saying that, but looking at what he did this past season, it's hard to argue. Now, I want to put a little disclaimer out there. When it comes to me evaluating these prospects, because I've never talked to some of these prospects, and I don't know none of these prospects, I don't know where their mindset is at. Their mental makeup. I don't know. So the, the little disclaimer that I want to put out there is that if a player ends up being a little bit crazy, that usually is one of the things that's not going to make him into a good player when they get to the, into the league. The pressure that a player has, a prospect has when they get to the league is, is really, really great. And it's hard for some guys to handle. The other part of it is the drive to become great, the drive to be good. Some guys just literally go off of that athleticism and they never have that drive and they come into the league and they're never what they're like in college. They look like great college players and I'm sitting there evaluating, I'm saying, wow, this guy makes plays, but then their drive is just not there because they, they looked at their, their athleticism and thought that they could get by. So that's a little disclaimer that I want to put out there is that if I'm wrong about a prospect, you have to look at that because I think that that makes up at least 50% of how good a player is going to be when they get to the league. And obviously, disclaimer, if injuries happen like overhead careers or career ending, you can't look at me and say, oh, I was wrong about that. I feel as though I'm right about a lot of prospects, especially prospects that are said to be late round prospects. I'm feel like I'm pretty good at that. Now, I've had some that I've been wrong about, and I'm here to admit that. Jalen Ramsey and Ezekiel Elliott was two guys that I was wrong about. Now, with Elliott, there is still a little bit of that I still don't know because he has a great offensive line in Dallas, but Ramsey completely destroyed my opinion on him. And honestly, it was not him not having a lot of interceptions and me thinking that he would make a better free safety than he would a corner. And what he's shown in the NFL is that he actually has drive. And I, that's what now I'm starting to take a little bit more into when I study guys. I've been doing this since 2014. Like I said, I haven't been on YouTube to put it out there. But that's my track record. But it's those little, it's, it's that drive, that little thing in his mindset that drives him to be great is what has actually made him great into the NFL. So anyway, you know, I don't want to go too long. I'm almost at 10 minutes. Um, pretty much my next video is going to be about the wide receiver prospects. And actually today the combine is going on. I think it's quarterbacks, tight ends, and wide receivers. It's the second day of the combine. And like I said, I don't put too much into it, but I do love watching it. So that's going to be my next video. Um, honestly, you know, subscribe to see more videos. Comment so we can debate if you don't like an opinion that I have. Share so we can invite a lot of other people to debate with us. And rate so if you search for NFL Draft, then my video can be a little bit higher on the search bar. But I thank you for watching this video, and I hope y'all enjoy this journey as I will. Thank you.